Hello viewers, Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to my channel Learn English with Hamid. Dear viewers, before we start, please like, share and subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And as a gift, I'm going to teach you five comma uses part one. We'll do part two as well, maybe part three as well. So to understand the usage of comma, let's read a sample paragraph. And in that sample paragraph, the place where commas are used is in red. And after that, I'll explain comma rules to you. But before we do that, let's uh, consider these two sentences. You know, comma usage is or punctuation is very important. And if you use wrong punctuation, it can change the meaning. For example, this sentence, let's eat grandma and let's eat grandma. So you see the difference in the first sentence, you are addressing the grandma and you are telling her, let's eat, let's eat together. And what do you think is the second sentence? What does the second sentence mean? Well, this in the second sentence, you want to eat your grandma, <laughs> for example. So you see punctuation is so much important and we need to learn the different rules to make our meaning clear. Now let's read the sample paragraph. The sample paragraph starts with yesterday and after yesterday we have comma. Yesterday I, uh, I woke up feeling groggy, like angry. Before getting out of bed, like not in good mood. So before getting out of bed, I check my phone for new messages. In my inbox, comma, I had a message from my boss, comma, are you coming to the meeting tomorrow? I replied yes. So you see after yes we have a comma. I will attend the meeting tomorrow. After getting ready, so after this uh, expression we have comma. I made myself breakfast, again comma. So uh, pause the video and read it and pay attention to places, to the parts in this, in this paragraph where commas are used. Right, so I hope you read this paragraph. Now let's study these uses in detail. We're going to do five uses. The first usage. We use a comma after introductory words, phrases or clauses in a sentence. For example, you, could, you, you should use a comma after yes or after no when they are part of a sentence. So, yes, I will attend the meeting tomorrow. So after yes, we have a comma or um, no. So after no, after yes, there is uh, the underlying part, but it's my mistake. Or no, I will not attend the meeting tomorrow. So after yes, a comma, after no, a comma. In my opinion, the introductory part the best way to solve the problem is to start from the beginning. So after, in my opinion, is the introductory phrase and we use a comma after that. Before going to bed, so it's a verb phrase and we use a comma after that. I always read a book to relax. Although it was raining heavily, a compound sentence and the dependent clause used in the beginning and after that a comma. After, uh, uh, although it was raining heavily, she still went for a walk in the park. So after the first part, we have a comma. As soon as he heard the news, again, a clause and a comma after it, we rushed to the hospital to check on his friend. So the first rule, we use a comma after any introductory word, phrase or clause. I hope that's clear. Moving on to the second rule, the second rule is we use a comma to separate items in a list. You're describing a list and you use a comma. We should use a comma after that. For example, she bought apples, bananas and oranges. A comma is used here. For breakfast, I had toast, comma, eggs and tea. Another sentence is they sell, uh, the store sells apples, comma, oranges and bananas and strawberries, for example. She, another sentence is she enjoys reading, watching movies and going for walks in the park. The movie stars Tom Cruise, comma, Morgan Freeman and a new actor, comma, used here. And uh, w one more point you should uh, remember 
we may use or we may not use a comma uh, before and it's optional like she bought apples so after apples we have comma here but after bananas we may not have a comma as in the first sentence or we may have so first three sentences have no comma while the last two have a comma after the last two sentences have a comma so both are correct moving on the third rule is we use a comma to separate two adjectives and those these two adjectives equally qualify the same noun for example she is talented she's a talented intelligent student so you see two adjectives used for the same person we use a comma in between them the small cozy room was perfect for our stay so two adjectives used a comma after that and while speaking we'll pause a little for example we'll say she's a talented intelligent student she's a talented intelligent student there is a pause he wore a crisp comma white shirt to the interview the old rusty car ran down the road and the tall comma handsome man walked into the room of course when we speak we don't say comma i'm saying uh, the word comma for your understanding so that's the third rule we use a comma to separate two adjectives Moving on the fourth rule is we use a comma to set off non-essential information like sometimes we put non-essential information we insert that into a sentence it's not essential but it is important so for that non-essential information we use a comma for example the author who won many awards is known for his writing style so you see who won many awards is a non-essential part in this sentence and we use a comma to set off that information Another example sentence is about a movie. The movie which was directed by Steven Spielberg won several awards. So, uh, which was directed by Steven Spielberg. This part inserted in commas. Another example sentence is the restaurant located on Park Road has the best pizza in town. So, uh, located on Park Road, that part is look uh, that part is inserted in commas another example sentence is his car a blue honda civic is parked in the driveway so a blue honda civic part is inserted in the commas uh, the last sentence also has uh, non-essential information and inserted in commas and that non-essential information is which was scheduled for the next week so the concert which was scheduled for the next week has been postponed due to bad weather so non-essential information if we introduce that so we use commas for that the last rule in today's video is we use a comma to separate or introduce direct speech or quotations for example she said I love this place so this somebody's direct speech we use a comma before that the coach said to the team, we need to work harder. Yes, you can see a comma is used here. Another example sentence, she said, can you pass me the salt? So after she said, and the fourth sentence is about Shakespeare. Shakespeare said, time flies when you're having fun. So we use a comma to introduce a quote by someone. By the way, is this quote by Shakespeare? What do you think? Was Shakespeare who said this? Tell me in the comment section. I'm not sure about it. The last sentence, the, sorry, yeah, the last sentence, this last uh, example sentence, Kate said, comma, a thing of beauty is a joy forever. Yes, I'm sure she, Kate said that. So you see, after Kate said, uh, comma is used after that. So that's the fifth rule. So let's have a quick recap. We did five uses. We use a comma after introductory words, phrases or clauses. The second is we use a comma to introduce items in a list. The third is we use a comma to separate two adjectives that equally qualify the same noun. The third rule is we use a comma to introduce non-essential information in a sentence. We also use a comma to separate or introduce direct speech and that's it. 
So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please give it a like, share it with your friends and subscribe to this channel and keep watching. Part 2 is coming soon. See you.